Hey everybody, John from 5X Racing here. Today my father and I are going to show you the installation procedure of our Miata floor pan drop. So the product's designed to lower the seat height of the Mazda Miata. It's needed in a lot of Miata race cars because drivers like myself, six foot tall or more, um, just don't have enough room for their head in contact with the roll cage. The car is just too tight. So what this product does is allows you to drop the entire seating area of the, of the car and it just gives you more room overall to put in a bigger seat um, or just be more comfortable while inside the race car. This was a rule change in the SECA and NASA spec me out rules uh, a couple years ago. And I think it was done in terms of safety to allow you to clear the roll cage area from your helmet. So you have to be uh, a certain amount, I think it's two inches away from the main hoop or the broomstick test, which is um, roll the main hoop height uh, on the car, if you were to put a broomstick from the main hoop to the front hoop, is there going to be two inches of clearance between the top of your head and the bar? So this product allows a lot of drivers like myself, which are tall, to meet that criteria. So the nature of the kit is DIY, to do-it-yourself kit. However, we intended it to be done um, by somebody competent in welding or by a professional. We're actually going to install the kit, tack it in temporarily, and then we are going to bring it to a professional roll cage builder and welder, which we use to finalize the welding on our roll cages. So our skill levels here are building our own roll cages. Uh, we bend them, we design them, uh, you know, we, we take it all the way to the point where we really want a good professional weld job done. So we're not professional welders. There's definitely an art and a skill required to this. So we 100% recommend that you take it to a professional welder uh, or fabricator to finish off the project. At least get it to the point to where you have to weld it all the way around or you feel like, okay, I got it in place, I'm comfortable with it, just have somebody finish it off with the welding. So with that, I'm gonna go over the product, show you what it is, and then my father, Rick, is going to uh, install the product and we're going to get it to the point to where we're comfortable enough with how it fits and then we're going to take it to our professional welder he's going to finish it off and at that point the pan is installed and it's safe okay so here we're looking at the floor pan and this is basically the kit that you're going to get from us it's ready to drop in we pre-install uh, this section here this cutout and we tack it in place for you however um, you can see that it's not fully welded and this is because every car is a little bit different and there might be some trimming and touch up that you need to do so we didn't want to have it you know 100 percent okay this is how it should fit in your car because we understand that everybody's car is going to be a little different and the process and involved in the process that you take to get to complete might be a little different so just keep in mind this section here will need to be welded when you do your final welding and that will obviously you'll see that when you get to that point so that's the main part this is the pan it's a steel cold rolled steel pan and it's built in accordance with the SCCA spec on thickness and over here you see the channel that's designed to go on the subframe this is the subframe brace support. It's designed to reinstall or uh, reinforce the subframe after it's been cut. And this small piece here is a weld nut and we're going to include this to your discretion on installation on whether you want to install it for your seat belt and your harness um, bolt. So this is up to you but we're going to install it. We didn't want to pre-weld it in there just in case you had a different idea on what you wanted to do with your harnesses but it will be included in the kit also included in the kit are going to be templates and my dad will instruct on how these are going to be used these are our master templates here that we're creating to highlight how they're supposed to be used and they're just a guideline and how you can get stuff lined up 
and it's a it's an installation aid basically but these will also be included in the kit and here's where the pan will actually go in the car this is the area to be cut out my father's already pre-marked it and he'll be explaining on um, what these measurements mean and where stuff will go but basically you can see the outline of where you'll have to cut out the floor pan and this will definitely be one of the parts that uh, requires competent metalworking abilities and cutting and grinding. Okay, so we have this marked already because we've already pre-planned this out, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how to use the templates and what they mean. This is the front angle, and that will go right up against the back of the seat support. This goes against the back of the seat support See, it's marked floor. It goes against the back of the front seat support and provides you with the height of the mark and the cut. This template C gives you the height of the cut and the mark on top. This is a 90 degree angle to the floor. So that's how we establish the back line. You put a mark at one and three quarter from the rear bulkhead. Another mark here next to this bracket from the rear bulkhead up one and three quarters of an inch. And the vertical line is one and a half inches from this rear seam right here. Once the rear line is established, this is a little bit tricky, but you come up 22 and one quarter of an inch from your upright line in the back to the line in front. And your angle gauge will bring you close to that, but the measurement is more important. Just draw a line in front of the seat brace all the way up on the bracket you'll need to cut this bracket out all around just cut the bracket out and then cut all the way along this corner and along this rear brace here on an angle right there the remainder of this cut will have to be done from underneath because you can't get it from the top. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can cut this bracket out. Uh, if you have a long enough blade on your sawzall, you might be able to get some from the top, but otherwise you'll need to go from the bottom. Since we're in the middle of installing and, and building the roll cage, part of it is removable. So you can see we removed the door bars over there is definitely easier to do if you're not already with a roll cage so we'd recommend doing the project before you did your roll cage if possible some things to note and tips before you start is to obviously make sure all of your wires and lines that are in the car and underneath the car are out of the way because you do not want to cut through them with the saw blade and there's also a bracket that's spot welded on the back side of here that can be saved if you cut low enough. All right, so we're gonna start our first cut and we're gonna do this with a cutting wheel, a disc cutter, and it's not gonna be uh, an easy process or a clean process, so also very loud. So I'm gonna turn the audio off or really low for this section.
something to remember along the way when you're cutting this back line is when you get to about the point to where the sawzall is now you're going to reach the subframe the the channel subframe underneath the car so it's a good idea to try to angle that blade over a little bit so you have more surface area to work with And the same thing with the back. With the front, you want to angle the blade so you have a better cut on the bottom through the channel as well. 